What is up everyone? Chris Roma here, aka Roma Aquatics, coming to you with another hot end build. This is a mod on the afterburner that we just did. If the 4020 fan is not enough airflow for you, this is the Loud Owl, aka Stabby build with dual 5015 fans. I was able to pick up a four pack of the 24 volt 15 or 50 15 fans on Amazon for about ten dollars each. These parts are available on Thinkiverse. Um, I added my own gasket, um, which is why you see some glue on here and whatnot. We'll talk about that as we get to it. Uh, let's get into this video. First things first, if you haven't seen the afterburner build, you're going to need to watch that because the bottom here is from that video, and I'm not going to show how to do that in video, in this video. So basically, we get to, we build the afterburner, we get to this step, but instead of putting the 4020 blower fan on top, we're going to replace it with the Loud Owl, a.k.a. Stabby. So we're going to start out with this, with the uh, bottom of the afterburner already set up, ready to go, and your probe in place and we're just going to go ahead and cut those wires where we normally would have had uh, our blower motor on there for the uh, 4020 motor and we're gonna that's where we're going to attach uh, the wires for the dual 5015 fans uh, when we get to that we're going to need two 5015 24 volt fan blower fans as I said, I got a four pack on Amazon for about 10 bucks. They look like this. We're gonna be taking the cover off of this and doing some modifications. We need to clip off these eye nubs. And what we're gonna use for that is this, uh, there's a cutting tool provided in the STLs that you can print out. And this is basically uh, a pattern that you can use for the cuts that we're gonna need to do on the fans here. So to prep the fan, what we're gonna need to do is take this cover off and you could squeeze it and whatnot to get it off, but we're gonna need these snips anyways. They're already in my hand. So we might as well just cut these clips off because it's just easier and we're not gonna need them anyway. So why not just get rid of them? We're gonna need to smooth it out anyway. So this cover should just pop off real nice then. We don't need that anymore. This is the part we're after. Um, so we're gonna really, we're gonna need to smooth this out pretty nice. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But basically, um, this wire, we don't need this adapter, but leave yourself plenty of room. We might as well cut the adapter off now while we have the snip in our hands. And we're gonna need this cutting tool that we printed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the wire through the square on that cutting tool, pull it up and through, and we're gonna get that nice and lined up on the back there. Push it, hold it nice and tight. It kind of lines up with that little uh, eye socket there. And you can see everything that everything that's not covered in white is what we need to cut off. And we're just gonna use our snips for this. Seems a little intimidating, but it's actually a lot easier than it seems. So what we're gonna do is come in at an angle here, snip, snip. Snip. And we're just gonna snip this fan. Just take the pieces out as you need them. And you basically just keep working nice and slow. Take your pieces out nice and slowly. Just follow the pattern. Just keep them coming out. Nice and slow. No reason to be in a rush. Just take it out in nice small little chunks. And just keep continuing on your way. Until you get the whole thing off. So 
So you may get to this point and think you're done and realize, okay, I cut everything around the pattern, we're done. Nope, you need to cut that off, the eye needs to come out, and the rest of that needs to line up with that lip. So you, you basically need to keep going, something like this. And just keep taking it off in some very small pieces like that. Just work your way around until the fan lines up with the cutting tool. So when you're actually done, you should have something that looks like this. lines up nicely with the pattern no extra plastic you're going to want to go ahead and do that for two fans after you're done cutting you should have two fans that look something like this they match the pattern the walls half cut down they go up with the water don't worry about the little chips like this and that uh, the pattern will actually uh, the gasket and the back end here will actually hold it in so you could actually even pretty much lose majority of this plastic and it honestly probably wouldn't make too much of a difference um, considering how this is designed so don't be too concerned about how your cutting turns out because you could probably do a pretty awful job and have it still turn out pretty good uh, that being said try to do your best um, so the next step, uh, we're going to basically feed these wires through the back of your plastic piece here. And this is going to fit in here fairly nicely. You just want to keep, keep that wire up at the top there because that's how it's meant to be. Um, and it kind of slides, slides in. There's like a... There's a place that it fits, and you can feel when it goes in nice and snug. Not quite, oh, there it goes. All right, so that, that fan is nice and snug, and we're just gonna go ahead and do that with the other one. You just put the wire through the hole, slide it in kind of sideways, and you'll feel when it snugs up nicely. Should end up with something that looks a little bit like that. And this is where the gasket comes into play. Um, so originally that just went on there like that. And even when tightening the screws, there'd be a little gap there. Um, so I printed out and or I modeled a little gasket that I printed in TPU. Um, and that's just meant to go right over there and just kind of fill in that air gap just like any other gasket for any other part would do. Um, so then the cover just goes right on top there and we tighten up our screws. So after you tighten up the screws with the gasket, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, nice and airtight. So the next step is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wanna clip these liner uppers off here just get as close to that wall as you can and just cut it off you know we don't want to be blocking that air channel get as much as that off as you can do the same thing for the other side go right against the angle of the wall just so you can get Again, so you can get as much off as you can. You can take a heat gun to that too if you want to really get as much off as you can. But these snips should do a pretty good job getting as much of that off. After you do that, you should have something that looks kind of like this. Nice and airtight. You got both your fans in. Everything's tightened up. You got your wires coming out your back here. And what I like to do here is take my black to black, give it a little twist, keep these wires together, together, together. And what you could actually do 
As you do the little same thing for the red here. And once you get your starter twist going and you have your lengths going, you can take the ends of these wires, put it in your drill, tighten that up. It's not going to work one handed. Well, maybe it will. Wrong way. Get that tightened on and I'll show you what I mean. So now that I have my wires on my drill here, nice and attached tightly there, I'm gonna clamp this because I want it to end off right about there. Make sure this is nice and tight. The wires are about the same length. And slowly. Slowly, now you can slowly start releasing tension on your fingers twists up nicely. Now you can let go of that. And you have nicely wound wires. So now we're looking at something that looks like that. Now from this point, all you're gonna wanna do is strip both of those wires, attach them together as if they were one. Strip both of these wires, attach them together as if they were one. Then you're gonna to wanna to see these blue and yellow wire that we cut from our other fan. We're gonna strip them and the yellow wire goes to the red and the blue wire goes to the black. So the next step is attaching the wires here. And what I'm going to do is use a soldering gun to solder the wires together and then use a heat gun to shrink the heat sink or heat shrink wrap that I already placed on the wire before I soldered. Very important. Make sure the heat shrink is on the wire before you solder or else you can't use it. Um, that's the way I'm going to do it. There's nothing wrong with just twisting the wires together, the red to the yellow and the black to the blue. There's nothing wrong with just twisting them together and using some electrical tape. That'll work just fine. Anything you can do to connect this wire to the yellow wire and the black wire to the blue wire and insulate it properly will work just fine. Once we have our wires connected, the next step is just to take those M3 screws that we had in there and just screw them down. So we just take, take our Loud Owl, AKA Stabby, and put it on top and screw the screws on both sides down. After those screws are tightened down, all that's left to do is set that Z offset and your X and Y offsets for your probe, and you should be good to go. They should still match the exact same uh, X and Y offsets that you did if you uh, had the afterburner already set up. Since we didn't change the mount or the probe, we just changed the fan. forgot to mention when you're printing out the gasket you can print it as wide or as thin as you would like just in your slicer just uh, adjust your scale on the Z axis and you can set it to whatever percentage you'd like it's set to a one millimeter gasket by default uh, but you could also set it to say 200% and have it be a two millimeter gasket depending on whatever fits your needs and you could also if these fans you find are a little wobbly after you put it in say you printed your gasket a little thick or even when they're thin you just find your fans are wobbly for whatever reason uh, you could also just put a little dab of hot glue um, in the step when you when you're tucking the fan into the back casing there just put a dab of hot glue in the back there and make sure that fan's secure in there and you won't have any wobble at all um, I thought I'd show a Benchy getting printed here. Um, so what we're going to see here are some actual speed. This is an actual speed right now. Uh, we're going to see some actual speed prints. And then we'll see some time lapse cut in, in between until we finish the Benchy. And then I will go over the Benchy.
during this clip you could hear the fan kicking up and down during experimental bridging mode where it turns the fan down while it's doing bridging or first layers to improve the cooling. Listen carefully. This is the results with no touch-ups right off the bed. Fairly happy with it for that speed. We are going at 100 millimeters per second uh, across the board. So basically almost equivalent to basically uh, 200 millimeters per second um, because uh, we were doing 100 millimeters per second walls and infill and everything else off straight down the line 100 um, and that is at 1200 acceleration overhangs look really great basically perfect can't have any complaints about those overhangs whatsoever even in the light trying to find some flaws very nice there's a little bit of a flaw there but at that speed can we really complain about that the bridging looks absolutely fantastic which is what we're testing bridging and overhangs with these this cooling. Look at that side actually looks better than the other side. And these bridges and overhangs look absolutely fantastic. Can't complain about that at all. Chimney looks amazing. Roof looks great. Everything looks great. I can, cannot complain about this benchy at all, especially at those speeds. Roma Aquatics out.